Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Staff Sergeant Lesby. I'm with 1st Platoon Attack Company 138 Infantry. Today I'm going to be talking through the standard range card. Uh, I'm going to brush on the references real quick. Everything that, that comes on this accompanying test uh, that's with it is in those references. And then uh, we'll delve right into the range card itself, right? So first things first, we have DA Form 5517. That is your range card itself. We have T, uh, ATP 3-21.8, Infantry Platoon and Squad. We have TC 3-21.75, the warrior ethos and soldier combat skills. We have TC 3-22.240, the medium machine gun. Like I said, everything on the exam can be found in there. And uh, you can find all these on armypubs.army.mil. You do not need a CAC card. Uh, to get onto that website, you just need either a phone, a tablet, or a laptop with a connection to the internet. And you can get onto that website and find those, those bits and pieces. Uh, so with that being said, we'll start with the admin portions of the range card here. And then we'll work towards the, uh, the drawn portion. All right, so here on the top left, squad platoon company, uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward weapon squad drew this up from first platoon attack company. Uh, across the way on the top right corner, magnetic north, you're literally going to lay your compass down to get that magnetic north. That gives the PL or whoever you're sending a new hire uh, an orientation to this thing when they receive it. Position identification, you can put a grid in here. Uh, for this example, I put OP1 machine gun too, assuming there's multiple OPs, and this is the second machine gun at this OP. Uh, weapon system, M240 Lima, pretty easy to figure that one out. Date is just your standard date time group. And then each circle uh, meters. Uh, so there's nine ha uh, circles on this thing. You're going to take a however far you can see or however far you want to draw, and you're going to divide that number by nine, and that's going to be your uh, each circle meters. You're just going to estimate from there. Just use 100 just to make it easier for me to do a little bit of math. Uh, so with that, we'll, uh, we'll dive right into the first piece, right? So... First things first, we have an FPL. You're not always going to get an FPL, but we'll do our FPL first. Um, in this case, it's along our right edge. And where you have effective grazing fires, it is going to be doubly thick. So if you see something along the lines of this, that means that that little gap right there at about 360 meters or so, that means I do not have effective grazing fires in that spot along my FPL. So it's going to need to be Noted that's going to be needed taken care of uh, at some point soon uh, to cover that, spell, uh, that space. All right, so there's that, right? So this little gap specifically is what I'm talking about right here. That means that I do not have effective grazing fire in that spot. All right, so that is my right limit. Uh, your FPL is always going to be your left to your right limit. Um, in this case, my left limit, so I'm going to, or my right limit, excuse me, so I'm going to make my left limit. That right there is my primary sector. Uh, now I'm going to start looking for stuff inside this sector and I'm going to try to find my PDF, uh, my, pr my primary direction, principal direction, excuse me. Um, before I get to that though, number one, always going to be your FPL down here in the middle or at the bottom. So I'm going to write that down before I forget. All right, so out there I see, uh, I see a container here in the middle. I'm going to leave that as my number two. I think that's going to be my FPL because it looks like there's a road back there and it looks like people can easily dismount and uh, start attacking from that position, right? So I'm going to draw my arrow that points to it to denote my FPL, or excuse me, my PDF. And that's that, right? Now, what else do I see? Uh, you know, about 800 meters out, I have a, a lone tree out in the distance. It's the only tree that's out there. It's pretty, pretty un, uh, remarkable compared to everything else, uh, the scrub brush and everything like that. Pretty easy, identifiable, but it's another TRP for me to look at and uh, take, uh, take note of. All right, so we have FPO, we have PDF, and then we have an extra TRP um, to put on here. We'll start marking them down here. So FPO, your direction, deflection, by doctrine, you do not need to put anything in here. You just put a slash mark through there. I like to put a metal to metal left, metal to metal right. Uh, it's just SOP-wise, whatever's up to you. Elevation, say 200 mils. You get that off of your tripod. We'll see here in a second when we do the uh, PDF. And then your range, uh, we have full max effective, 600 meters. And then 7.62 uh, millimeter uh, ammunition, All right? Number two, PDF. All right, so we'll delve into this one, right? So your description, PDF, container, right? Be as descriptive as you can with that little bitty space. Uh, so switch to my photos real quick. You can see we have a uh, 2145, we have eyes on the container. It's at about 700 meters. Um, I have it locked in, that's what I would shoot at. And so I would pull straight off my T and E here. I would pull uh, the direction deflection and then my elevation, right? So the direction 
from my TNE. I can barely see that, but it's 600 meters, and it looks like the number two there crosses over that uh, that line right there. So we'll do 602 for our direction. And for our elevation, 260 right on the button. Our, our, our zero crosses right over that line. So we'll use 260 and 600, excuse me, 260, 602 and 260. Oops. And then our range, we guessed it at 700 meters. And that doesn't have to be exact. Use whatever tools you have available to you, like binos, uh, range, range finder, or your eyeballs, and uh, do the best you can with that uh, estimation. The closer you are, the easier it is going to be to just shoot that target without having to really do much aiming and just use your tripod. And then lastly, we have our lone tree out there. Skip to this piece, we just saw how to do that. And then we have Lone Tree, right? And that's that, right? So uh, we'll talk about a secondary sector real quick and then we'll touch on some dead space and I think that, that'll wrap us up, right? You'll see secondary sectors fairly often. Um, they're used to supplement other positions. They're used for a bunch of different reasons, uh, but that's what it's gonna look like. You're just gonna do hash marks, um, it may touch your primary sector. It will not always touch your primary sector and it will never overlap your primary sector. Your primary and your secondary will always be separate uh, separate uh, from each other. All right, so that's the secondary sector. We're supplementing another machine gun is over here, uh, helping him cover his sector if, if need be, right? Uh, from here, he's got a big old hill right here. There's some dead space behind him. We're helping him cover that bit. And then we'll make that our number four. All right, so direction deflection, say it's 800 mils, you know, just, just put in whatever your tripod says, and that's at uh, 100 mils. And then that is 750 meters away. Hilltop, very noticeable. Um, it's the only hilltop in that area. Okay, so with that, uh, you're gonna type in some dead space, right? So obviously behind this hill, from where we're sitting, there's gonna be some dead space back here. You can draw it in however you want it. As long as you put it in the remarks section, you can never be wrong, right? So I like to do it like this. Let's do a hash marks like that. And you draw it close to how you have it up there. And then you label it as dead space, right? You can label it however you want, right? Say you got some more, we got some more dead space right here, right? You can put an X through it. And then as long as you label it down here, it doesn't matter what you put it, right? And you can label anything like that too. Like you'll say, so you got some, uh, some swampy marshy stuff right here. That's gonna be your swamp. It's good to note it because uh, your friendlies aren't gonna wanna go in there. And there's a good chance that enemy aren't gonna be going through there either. Um, it's kind of starts turning into a sector sketch at this point, right? You can start adding your elevation and everything like that as, as you want to, uh, as you've got more time to improve this thing. Um, but basically that's it. That's what you want to look like with your, your range card. Fill in your, uh, what you can see, get some TRPs on there and then describe them. Uh, direction, deflection, all that good stuff. Um, so that's it. Um, like I said, if you have any questions or uh, you're going through the exam and you can't find anything on here, you can go through those references, the, uh, the ATP and the two TCs. And then uh, that should be about it. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you.